She's not here. Top 10 cell phones in gaming. Why? Dumb question. Why not? Now since there are only so many games that actually have cell phones worth mentioning as a story or gameplay element, I am going to be a little lenient on what this category entails. Basically, I'm looking for a small, portable, electronic device that's not built into anything else, and its core purpose is to be used as a long-distance communication tool. That good enough for you? Alright, let's go! Okay, so this is definitely the biggest stretch on the list, hence it being on the bottom. The Tomb Raider game from 2013 stars Lara Croft as she's shipwrecked on an island in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle with a handful of shipmates. She soon finds that there's a clan of crazy people out for their blood on the island, so she's got half a mind to find some means of rescue for her and her buddies. There's a section in the game where Lara receives a radio that she uses to communicate with Roth one of her fellow shipwrecked adventurers, and also her mentor. He gives her plenty of advice when needed on how to survive and where she should go next. But the most memorable part the radio plays in the game is when Lara has to climb up a tall radio tower that's constantly breaking and stuff and almost getting her killed until she finally makes it to the control panel on top where she's able to establish a good enough frequency to contact some military support for an emergency evacuation and it actually comes. And then there's thunder and lightning and, and people dying and explosions and falling down cliff sides. You know, just normal adventure things. Alright, so the radio might not have had a huge part in the game, but it definitely led to one of the most memorable parts of what I consider to be a pretty awesome game. You know what's cute? Kirby. You know what's cuter? Four Kirbys. You know what's cutest? Those four little Kirby's running around saving the world and calling each other up so they can chill together. Not a whole lot to say on this one. It's just cute. Alright, moving on. Okay, let me set the scene for you in Final Fantasy VII, somewhere between 5-8 to eight hours into the game depending on who's playing. You just escaped the clutches of Shinra after a huge catastrophe, weird experiments, several cool boss battles, a really, really creepy segment of the game that could have earned it a T rating just on its own, and even a super awesome fast-paced chase with motorcycles and buster swords and trucks and robots and all that cool jazz. And now, you and your friends must leave your home in Midgar and explore the land of Gaia as you chase down any leads you have on the whereabouts of the mysterious Sephiroth. Now, in this game, you can only have three members in your party at a time. But when you're in the overworld, you can use the cell phone, or PHS, to call up your pals like Eris, Yuffie, or Red13 so you can meet up for a party swap and make sure you've got the members you want when you're going into battle. Okay, sure. I guess it's really just an overglorified party menu, but hey. Maybe that's why it's so low on the list, huh? The world of Remnant is crawling with dangerous and slightly murder-prone creatures called Grimm. The people who fight them off? Huntsmen and Huntresses. In Ruby Grim Eclipse, you play as a Huntress in training who's off on their own fighting down monsters and trying to solve a perplexing mystery among the ruins that surround the Kingdom of Vale. Of course, you wouldn't make it far without a little guidance, which is where your scroll comes in. Through your scroll, your teachers from Beacon Academy like Professor Port and Professor Ublek It's Dr. Ublek. I didn't earn the PhD for fun, thank you very much! Right, doctor, whatever, can call you up and tell you where to go and what to do, and usually have some helpful tips for you. Make sure your weapons are loaded and your mustache wax is stoned. This is here. The big downside of scrolls is that, like the cell phones of our world, they have limited signal, and if you find yourself in a dead zone, that little piece of plastic and glass is pretty much useless. Ah! So there I am. I've been playing nothing but Gen 1 for the past, like, four years or something, I don't know. My older sister hands me a cartridge she got from a friend and says I can have it because she isn't really into Pokemon anymore. And that's how my journey into Gold version began. I played for hours, all day, every day, exploiting the abilities of my pet slaves, throwing metal balls at innocent animals, talking to people, and what? Getting their numbers? This was so cool to me, because it made me feel like I had a real connection to the people in this world. Like I wasn't the only real trainer in the game, and like I was really making friends. It's a very simple addition, but it was really cool to me when I was a young, impressionable kid who thought everything was cool, so I think it deserves points for that. Wait a minute.
When you're trying to take down a corrupt organization in the digital age, your greatest asset is going to be your manipulation of technology, something that Aiden Pierce from Watch Dogs is definitely no stranger to. Using his smartphone, he's able to do quite a lot. He can look up background information on people and predict crimes, hack into security cameras and traffic lights, even cause widespread blackouts, and that's only scratching the surface. So with all of this at Aiden's disposal, you might be wondering why I put this so low on the list. I actually took off points for two reasons. First, because even with all this cool stuff, even the smartphone isn't able to make Aiden Pierce an interesting protagonist. And second, because it's really not the phone that's all that impressive. It's the software on the phone. I'm not convinced that this software had to be on a cell phone at all, let alone this cell phone specifically to work properly. I feel like Aiden could have taken it and put it onto any small computer and had the same exact effect. So putting it too high above other entries on this list would have felt like saying that, oh, one PlayStation 4 is more valuable than another identical PlayStation 4 just because this one happens to have the Silent Hills PT demo downloaded onto it. Oh. Uh... One of the greatest questions mankind has been trying to answer for pretty much as long as they've been around is, what happens after you die? Well, according to The World Ends With You, there's a slight possibility that you're going to find yourself in a weird game-like purgatory where you're invisible to living people. Unless you're inside a store. For some reason. You have a limited amount of time to work with your partner and meet some sort of objective and win back your life. If you fail, however, you're completely erased from existence. A clue is given to you and your partner through a cell phone text, which is why the little device is so important, because it's the only way to find out how to keep you and your friend alive. Uh, um, undead? Not erased from existence? Pseudo- ah, forget it. Next! Alright, it's cool being able to just talk to NPCs and all, but what else can a good cell phone do? How about... Diffuse bombs, hack computers, operate jetpacks... And, yeah, it's pretty cool that you can call up characters almost anywhere and actually have them respond according to where you are or what you're up to. Alright, I don't know what Toby was thinking when he came up with some of the ideas for this phone, but more people really have to start thinking like that. So, are we going to talk about Purgatory again? Yeah, sure, why not. Harry Mason is stuck in the super creepy town of Silent Hill that has a really bad ice problem as he's searching for his missing child, Cheryl. Dave! No. So, you're looking for Cheryl in the snow and abandoned buildings, but every once in a while, you find these weird little fluctuations in the air or something. So, you take your cell phone and do the most logical possible thing. Take a picture of it, and what you get is... Oh, that's creepy. You get all the other general stuff too, like text messages and voicemails on your answering machine from dead people. Hey, I got a good idea. Let's call up, uh, let's call up Konami. Thank you for calling Konami Customer Support. How may I assist you today? Um, hello? Hello? Our caller ID shows that you're calling from Silent Hill. I regret to inform you that you are beyond even our help. Yep. Just what I'd expect from modern Konami. Completely useless. Colonel, come in. Can you read me? Wait, who is this? Wait, who are you? Hey, I asked you first, dude. This is Snake. Seriously? Who came up with that name? This is a high-security, secret communication device used by Foxhound. This is how I'm given important information as I search Shadow Moses Island for the Metal Gear. High security? Well, if you ask me, you guys might have one or two or seven chinks in the old armor. Yeah, I can see that. You know, you might have a better security track record if you didn't keep all your super-secret phone numbers on the back of the game case. I don't have time for this. Alright, fine. Go blow up your iron gear or whatever you call it. But hey, you called me. Hey there everyone, just wanted to say thanks for watching. Doing all the editing for this was a little bit of a project. So, like always, every view, like, comment, and subscription is greatly appreciated. So if you feel so inclined and... 
Uh, Alright, can, can somebody pick up that phone? Master Miller, can you hear me? Um, who is this? Oh, come on! 